If you're a fan of softball, then you are going to love the Fast Pitch TV show sponsored by Easton Sports. Now the man that knows more about softball than anyone on the planet, your host, Gary Leland. Hello and welcome to the Fast Pitch TV show. Now if you're watching this episode on YouTube, MySpace, Facebook, or another video sharing site, please check out our website, fastpitch.tv. It's the place to find all of our past episodes and a great place to keep up with future episodes also. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank our sponsor, Easton Sports. The truth is, there is a difference. The difference is Easton. And you can visit their website at www.eastonsoftball.com. Now this week, I have another interview from the College World Series. If you're a regular viewer, you know I went to the World Series and made quite a few interviews while I was there. This week's interview, though, is with Carol Hutchins, head coach of the Michigan Wolverines fast pitch team. Now, I don't want to diddle-daddle around, so we're going to go straight to the interview with Coach Hutchins. Coach, okay. I appreciate you being here with us. You've got to be feeling pretty good after uh, the Super beating Baylor two games in a row, and last night you had a great win there. Well, I, I feel good. Our team is playing well, and we've been playing well. But you can't really feel too good going into a game against Florida. They are absolutely superb in uh, every aspect. But uh, we're pleased to be in this position. Well, um, I'm going to ask a few questions just to get people a little bit more knowledge and a little basis behind who you are. How did you get into uh, softball originally? Oh, well, you know, I uh, grew up in the era when there wasn't a lot, as much organization as there is today. And uh, I used to go across the street to the school uh, that I, my grade school, and with my brothers and their friends, and we played baseball, and usually it'd be one on four, you know, the hitter versus the four fielders we'd have or something, and uh, I got into uh, the local uh, women's team was called the Lansing Laurels, and they were very popular, and this is back in the 70s, and they were a um, women's major, and I tried out for their farm team and made it when I was 16 years old, the Lassies, and the next year I got moved up to the... Uh, the Laurels, and that was my the beginning of my softball career. And I played with the women's team, and uh, I was one of the youngest members. Although there were a few who were actually younger than me, and I uh, played with them for a number of years. And we were very competitive in the women's major, and that's really how I got into it. And how did you move into coaching from there? Well, I was a college athlete, and I actually played basketball and softball at Michigan State University. And I was always going to be a basketball coach. That was my dream. I wanted to teach and coach basketball, and um, uh, by the end of my soft, my uh, senior year at State, I um, I just ended up getting into softball coaching. I applied for some graduate assistant positions, and I got a job at Indiana University, and my first job was with Gail Blevins, who is, of course, the famous Iowa coach and uh, Hall of Famer, and uh, she was at Indiana at the time, and uh, that was the beginning of it for me, and I've been in it ever since. You know, nowadays, so many uh, young kids getting into the sport are getting into select sport at a select softball at an early age, and that's all they're playing is pretty much year-round. What do you think of that compared to playing softball, basketball? Because I was saying that because you said you played basketball, playing a lot of sports during the year. Well, and maybe it's my background, but uh, I, I'm a huge advocate for these young kids to play as many sports as they can, as many as they love, and to, to practice competing. And uh, when they move up and and get older, they'll get into the grind of daily training and working with trainers and pitching coaches and hitting coaches and, and the things we do at our level. But to do that at such a young age, it, it um, I don't think there's much satisfaction in practicing every day, practice, practice, practice. And uh, I th I'm a big believer in, in different sports. It gives you different uh, experiences, different social experiences. And I think the best athletes are the best athletes who play and play different sports and not just softball. Don't They don't just catch, throw, pitch, hit, they, they can do a lot of things. And some of my best players have been multi-sport athletes. Okay. Now, what do you, uh, is there any practice drill or anything that's like, you know, I think this is like the greatest practice drill. This is the one that you need to know that you could share with us. Uh, I, I don't have a favorite. I, I mean, I could tell you, if you came to practice, we always do my favorite drills every day. And they, it changes based on uh, sometimes what I think is working for us at the moment. But, um, so uh, the only thing I can say is that we like to um, try to do our drills repetitively at a fast pace and intense pace so that we can uh, keep them ready for the, the pace of the game that they're going to encounter in college softball because the only difference between our game and the youth game is the pace of the game. Okay. And uh, you know, there are a lot of great athletes, I think, out there that sometimes just never get seen. 
you know, they just weren't in the right place and they were good enough to make it, but they just weren't on the right team. They weren't in the right place. If someone was interested in going to Michigan, how would, how would you say, hey, this is a good way that you'd have an opportunity of me seeing you? Come see us. That's why uh, one of the, the most important aspects of our summer camps, our winter camps, our hitting clinics. You know, we put on a number of camps throughout the year because we cannot possibly get out and see every person that is interested in us or that we hear is a good player. And uh, for those kids who are in areas or in situations where they just don't get to, you know, to play in the, in the tournaments that we go to, then, then pick out some schools that you're interested in. Um, find a mentor that can help identify where they think you might belong and go there. And, and be seen and, and go up to the coach when you get there and say, I'm really interested in your school. Will you please take a look at me this week? And that is one of the best ways to get seen. You know, a lot of people have all, always been, or, or have told me, said, uh, send us your film or whatever. But you and uh, George Bulldogs coach both said to me today, come to our camps. So y'all both saying, come to us. Don't be sitting there waiting for us to find you. Come, come show us your stuff. Well, you know, again, the tapes can sometimes show show what kind of athlete you are. They show us your physical characteristics. But uh, generally, um, you're not going to be able to make any kind of decision off of that tape. You might say, gee, she does look like a pretty good athlete. Maybe we can follow up. Uh, but we And we get sent hundreds of them. And we get thousands of correspondence throughout the year, whether it's email, letters, tapes. And the best way to be seen is to be seen in person and to come to a, a situation where we can see you repetitively over a period of a few days or a week uh, at a camp is really the best way for us when we can't get out and see you in a game. And uh, as much as everybody wants us to come to their games, there's way too many of them and there's not enough of us. That, that definitely makes sense. Now you've been in this game for a while. So let me tell you, with your experience, who would you say is probably the greatest softball player of all times? Oh, I would never say that in public. I think there's too many of them. But, uh, you know, I came from the era of Joan Joyce. I interviewed her last week. And um, she certainly is one of the greatest ever. And a great lady, too, to talk to. And a great coach. Um, and you can talk about the Carol Spanks and the, that era. But uh, there just there's been so many great players. And you look at the kids that are on the field here, and they'll be kids that we talk about in the future. Um, and I'm just fortunate that I've had the chance to play against some of them, play with some of them, and coach some of them, and coach against them. And uh, that's what makes it all fun for me. Now, it's a short question here, but it's sometimes a very long answer. Offense or defense? <laughs> defense starts on the mound, and you cannot win without it because pitching is defense. And it's it ultimately, I said this in 05 when we got here, and we were known for our offense that year. Um, and I said, if you if you have to pick one, I was going to pick defense because we you've got to pitch well to win big. But uh, you're not going to win without scoring runs. And we've really emphasized the offensive part of not only our game, but I think in the sport of college softball, you see offense. You've never seen it like you see it today, and it's because we emphasize it. But uh, if you have to pick one, you got to pick your pitching. Now, there was something I was saving for the last year because I wanted to ask you. I was watching you against Baylor. I and you have a band at your games. I don't think I've ever seen a band at a softball game. You have a great band at the softball games. Well, it's the Michigan Alumni Band, and actually they are um, very much the softball band, although they do play at some of the other events. Uh, it's it may, Our atmosphere at Alumni Field is so fantastic, and they tend to come out for whether it's, we call them the big games or the postseason games. Um, they're very loyal to us. We consider them part of our family. I wish more than anything they could be here. But um, they do. They make our environment really special. Well, Coach, I want to thank you for coming on the show. You've given some people some insight maybe, especially if they want to come to your school. That's a great tip on coming out and showing you their stuff instead of making you track them down. It's an investment on their part. But they, we've had a number of kids in our program right now that have uh, Amanda Chittister, our all-star freshman, she was a camper for years. Jenny Ritter was a camper for years. And certainly they were local kids. But um, sometimes kids have to do a little more, more work on the front end because recruiting is not – always uh, people sitting on your doorstep and, um, you know, just waiting for you. It's not the way it works. There's too many kids out there these days, and I am most interested in kids who are interested in us. Well, good luck in the tournament, and thanks again for coming on the show. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the interview. I personally enjoyed meeting Coach Hutchins and interviewing her. She was very kind to take time out of her very hectic weekend for the interview. And I'm telling you, it was pretty hectic there at the College World Series. I'd like to personally take this opportunity to say thanks, Coach. I do appreciate you taking the time. Don't forget to check out our website. As I said earlier, fastpitch.tv is the website. And visit our fan page on Facebook. Come a fan of the show at facebook.com slash fastpitch tv 
Now it's time to say goodbye, so let's end it as usual with a word from our sponsor, Easton Sports. Thanks for watching. This bat's great, great pop, nice in the zone, feels good on the hands. The sweet spot is pretty nice, um, it's not as small as some other bats, even if you don't hit it exactly on it. The ball still travels as far as it's supposed to.